Hey, Kate, great to see you again. How are you doing? Yeah, good, Kurt. Nice to see you again as well. Well, thank you so much for doing this and taking the time. And also, uh, I want to say thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to help you bring this story to life. And when I say us, I mean uh, myself and the other five Ross agents that you hired from Atlanta. All of us had a, an amazing experience working with you and everybody else. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was great. I saw in the news recently that uh, Sydney is on lockdown. So does that mean you haven't seen the movie in the cinema? Yeah, it's been really uh, difficult because all the cinemas are closed and I was really hoping to share it with my family. And yeah, so it's in Sydney, it's like Black Widow's never happened. <laughs> so it's a, it's a really strange feeling, actually. Wow. Well, I hope and I pray that it happens for you soon. You're able to experience it because it, it was so Black Widow was my first movie in the theaters post uh, COVID. I'll have you live vicariously through me for a few moments and I'll, I'll tell you my experience. Um, it was great to have the, you know, the audience there, the funny scenes in the movie got loud laughs. And that was so, you know, that felt so great to hear that. And then the action scenes in the movie, especially like the parts where uh, when Natasha was getting hit uh, and we could, we could really feel it. And you heard all audible groans from the audience with that oh, too so so <laughs> all of that the laughs and the groans and everything you hear from the audience and it was so satisfying to to be oh, in there that's so great thank you for telling that. me that yeah I, I thought you would love to hear that people have asked me what what it was like to work on Black Widow and what I told them was that honestly one of the most memorable things about it all was the people I can't say enough good things about the entire crew um, from uh, everybody on set, obviously starting with you and, and the entire cast, but then also everybody at base camp, um, Sally, especially, uh, who was our second AD, took care of us so well. Uh, so I, I just want to hear from you, like, what was it like, you know, working with that team? Because I thought they were wonderful people. Yeah, it made it so much. I mean, you, you saw how many hundreds of people are involved with a film like this. So the fact that you had good people who cared about the well-being of others um, made it so much better. I mean, the day we shot, you were shooting in a heat wave right. and right. we um, were shooting with all of those cops. All the SWAT full, team members in the full. SWAT yeah. team. And they were having um, heat stroke Mm. And a few of them had to go to hospital on that day. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. wow. Or we had to get sort of medical assistance mm -hmm. for them. So, yeah, it was great to know that there was other people around who took care of um, mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. You know, now that you bring that up, it's actually one of my favourite memories of that set was there was one particular SWAT team member um, when every time we cut, he would reach into, you know, they were, they're all covered in head to toe mm -hmm. in this tactical gear. And you think they're all like, um, you know, stuff for their guns or artillery or all kinds of stuff. Right. But he pulls this thing out and we're wondering what it is it's all black. We don't know what he's about to pull out. You open it up and it's a fan <laughs> and you see this big SWAT team guy pull out this little fan. And then once we get to rolling, so boom. Yeah, I just yeah, I remember well, that's Georgia lying on the lying on the ground. Yeah, the poor guys and women as well. Right, right. Um, yeah, that that is Georgia, and that that was another great part of the experience was to be with you guys in London, and then also to have you guys come over to Georgia mm. in our home state and shoot for that a while. Was a great gig for you guys, wasn't it? We, you're telling me, <laughs> we <laughs> I loved was it. About it this morning. What a great yeah. gig you get to fly around the world um incredible it was my first time in europe it was my first time anywhere in europe um and then we had a lot of days off also so we just got to you know tour around the city and check it out and and you know i mentioned sally earlier so sally was phenomenal and offered us a, a van a driver in a van to you know drive us around on one of our days off <laughs> I was like you guys are great 
Um, so it was an amazing. Thank you, yeah. Disney. Thank you, Disney. Thank you, Disney, and thank you, Marvel. Yeah, they 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 definitely <laughs> took care of us. It was it was awesome. I also wanted to ask you some questions about um, your process of working with actors and auditioning and things like that in general, because um, my YouTube channel is a channel for actors. So I think it would be great to hear, you know, from a director standpoint, what is your on on set or maybe even before set process, whether it was for Black Widow or your previous movies on how you kind of bring that uh, story to life um, prior to actually filming. In terms of working with actors or in mm -hmm. terms of uh, with actors, okay. Yeah. Well, I tend, I tend to be of the idea. My idea really is to give the actors enough material about the character they're playing, so that the actor can inhabit the character. So what I like to do, like when we got on set. Mm -hmm. um, you and the other members of the security detail, mm -hmm. we talked about your relationships with each other, where you'd been, what was happening in your personal lives right. as each character so that you're not sitting there pretending to be, to, you're not making stuff up as you go. You kind of know who you are. Um, and then say with a bigger role, what I would do is for myself as a director, I would write a backstory. Mm. And that backstory might be a letter um, or it might be just a history as in uh, first person. So it would start with my first memory mm. or the first thing I remember is, and then it would go through. And then I offer that to the actors if they want it. Oh, okay. Or if they don't want it, that's fine because some people that process would really mess them around. I could see that process where um, the actor would make their own backstory and you make yours. Um, I could also see where, where you do uh, both look at each other's and then talk through it and then, you know, create. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was useful for us because we had a 12 year old girl mm -hmm. playing Scarlet, mm -hmm. playing Natasha. She was so fantastic. it was very really useful she was because fantastic. I could go back to um, the childhood and ever read it with her parents, mm. and then Scarlett could read it, so they knew that they were playing the same person. Um, That's great. And then I often that means that I don't have to do um, we we don't have to talk too much about a character's motivations or um, because then the actor knows why they would do certain things. Right. So there's, yeah. I, I tend then not to have to talk too much, um, except for when the actor probably is struggling or we want to see something completely different. Sure. We want to experiment with something different. Sure. Yeah. And, and going back to what you said of when we worked together, I really appreciated that. And I know every, all of all of us uh, that worked with you did, um, because not only did you talk about, you know, us in relationship to each other and then our backstory, but also with um, with uh, Secretary Ross Williams character and how, you know, what we all uh, were trying to accomplish with him. Um, I'll tell you, it was one of the uh, most, I guess, collaborative uh, experiences, even though we weren't, you know, we weren't major characters in the movie, but we still had that little moment of collaboration with you. Um, because it doesn't always happen on set, and to be honest, with directors. There have been times where I've been on set where I haven't, I never spoke a single word with a director. Um, and uh, so I really did appreciate that. I thought it was great. Um, even just, you know, those few brief moments to talk through that before we started. It, it does help to have a sense of authenticity and truth, no matter how small the role is. Yeah. Doesn't it? Like, because 100%. everyone on set is just trying to do their best. You guys yeah. turn up trying to like do your best. So, and it also means then if we'd, we've had that conversation and we've got a little bit of shorthand, mm -hmm. if you want to say later, oh, I think this, I can say, oh, okay, cool. Cause we know, uh. we know that we've got this, 
this we're coming from the same place right otherwise it's we're in some strange ether aren't we we're not sure right we, you don't know what i want and vice versa yeah and, yeah so yeah. it's very strange i'd also want to know about your process of auditioning actors and what mm -hmm. is you know what do you look for in terms of your audition process and and you know going through the selection of placing the actors into your into the roles that you're casting i think what is really beautiful is when you see actors who are actively listening so they're not so they're not and I know that's such a, we all talk about that, but it's like if you, if you see an actor that can flip because somebody else has done something, that's fantastic. I mean, that's David Harbour. If, if, if you do something, he's going to take it and he's going to fly with that. The mm. same with Florence mm. Pugh. So there's a real, they haven't just made up their mind, this is how I'm going to play it. And then they bulldoze through the scene. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're getting these really fresh moments of performance, Scarlett and Rachel as well, and OT. Mm -hmm. You're getting these really fresh moments because the actor is reacting. Right. And so the last thing I want to do when I work with somebody is work with somebody who's rigid, who's already made up their mind because it doesn't leave the other actors anywhere to go. Yeah. And it doesn't leave me anywhere to go. And it's not fun. Like my main thing is it's even in moments of high stress, you hope people are still having a good time in yeah. some shape or form. I yeah. mean, you're playing a, a pedophile or a rapist or something. You've yeah. still got to enjoy the process, even if you're playing a monster. Mm. You've got to find something to enjoy within that process. So I'm always looking for people that will experiment and that people that are not self-conscious so they don't give a shit about what they look like or they just will they'll just go into it. They'll just go into that place. And yeah. it's not easy. <laughs> it's relinquishing, um, which is freeing when it happens. We all mm -hmm. know that feeling when it happens. It's relinquishing who you are. Mm. And that's really hard, isn't mm. it? Because you just, you just have to go. It's like you have to trust. In, in this other part of you that right yeah and that's that's beautiful when it happens we all yeah. know the feeling of when that happens and I think the other hard thing is we're often chasing that and as soon as you're in a position where you're chasing that you've lost right <laughs> right I've definitely <laughs> every so, actor has had that feeling where you do a take and then you get complimented about that take oh I loved what you did let's do it again and then the actor is trying to recreate that take instead of trying to recreate something you know try to create something fresh uh which is what got them the good take to begin mm -hmm. with I think I I think I've learned as a director sometimes after a good take I just say oh thank you we'll move on and not say and not compliment the take not say anything about it really mm. and go to the next part of whatever I'm covering mm. except if you're crying or something it's very hard not to all right to sit for the actor to see but yeah 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 you you hope you create I think as a director you you're creating a neutral space aren't you so that the actor can just do their job mm -hmm. rather than putting too much of your personality or too much of yourself into any of the moments you've got to sort of move back take yourself out so that you're creating this beautiful space where the actors right. can just be i'm watching breaking bad at the moment again watching him work the two the two leads watching them work and how they work off each other yeah all of those actors they're just so makes me teary they're just so great they're just so great 
You're goddamn right. And this is something I wanted to ask you too, was that um, when, you, when you do audition an actor, then based on what you said, you don't have necessarily like a vision for what you want from the character. It's more of, you know, you're trying to establish this world for them and let's see what they bring to it and uh -huh. see how that, how that fits into the story. How they make me feel. Yeah. How they make me feel. Like I'm thinking about when I auditioned Sam Worthington mm -hmm. um, way back, ages ago, 15 mm -hmm. years ago, maybe more. I don't know. And I had thought, oh, he's not, he's not right for this part. Um, and so we auditioned about 100 young guys from Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And then nobody was quite right. And then we brought him in again. Actually, we brought him in. We, we'd never brought him in. And he did this thing in the audition where he flicked um, the actress's finger really hard and she sucked it. And I went, oh. And it was like, oh, he had the job. Wow. And that didn't come. I mean, he didn't do that. He didn't do that having thought it through, oh, I'm going to do that. He just did it. In it the was in the moment. moment. Yeah, it was in the And moment. then we ended up using that in the film. Wonderful. So it's, that, it's those sort of little, it's, the, it's specific moments that make you feel. Mm. Isn't um, it? That's what we want. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, I want to touch on really quick because you're, you're talking about Australia. And I have um, people that are subscribed to my channel from all over the world and definitely people from Australia as well. And because I've, you know, only worked in the U S and, and now uh, in, in the UK, but um, I really can't, I find it hard to answer some people's questions when they say, well, what about the film industry in my country? So I would love to hear about what is the film industry like in, uh, in Australia? Well, it's government subsidized. Okay. So that means that um, art house films, part of the budget comes from, from the government, from the taxpayer. So it's a very different system. Um, and then the other part of Australia is because our dollar's low and our crews are great. Um, so we have a lot of American or European films coming to shoot here. And that's fantastic for mm -hmm. actors here and for the crews. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, it's smaller of course, because we're a smaller country. Sure. But the craft is great because we have fantastic um, acting schools and universities that are that where the craft is beautiful. That's great. And that's again government government subsidized. Um, the, the teaching of it. Yeah. The schools. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot. It's more like Northern Europe, I suppose, okay. in that we see it as a cultural imperative to make films with people that sound like us. That's wonderful. And so was yeah. that this similar for you when you started? Uh, did you go to school for filmmaking? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. So I went to a film school and there was only four students in directing. Wow. And so it was like we were being trained to be fighter pilots you know, um, the, the amount of money that they would put into each student to make sure that when you leave, you can actually walk onto a television set and direct, or you can, you know, so it was, we were really lucky. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, it's changed yeah. now. Um, it was also very um, elitist. Um, mm -hmm. Is it very competitive to get into the program? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When I say elitist, what I mean, it's really different to America because in America, it's often about money. You have, um, your family has money so they can afford to send you to a great school. Sure. So in Australia, because it's government subsidized, that doesn't happen. Uh huh. And we also had a really big indigenous program at that time. Okay. So we've got a lot of Indigenous filmmakers because of that. Mm. What I mean by elitist is I think a lot of people from lower economic um, places don't even think about being a filmmaker. Right. 
Um, right. And now they we're hoping that shifts, you know, bringing more cultures and more people with different views, I suppose. Sure. All right. So I, I want to switch back really quick before uh, before we end to talking a little bit about the action that was in Black Widow. Mm-hmm. Was the action as fun to direct as it was to watch in the movies? It was. It yeah. was really fun, but it was also, it's like you're often shooting for sort of one second or four seconds or three seconds. Right. So it's very um, particular. Our actors were fantastic. And Florence had a background in dance and Scarlett had done so much action Mm -hmm. because of all the stuff she'd done. Mm -hmm. But they're still not, they're still not fighters. Right. So you're, you're finding moments to work and then to put the stunt performers in as well. And what I wanted was to try and see our actors more on camera so that I was I was trying to carry moments longer mm-hmm. so that's quite stressful for the stunt people sure um, and but it, it gives the fights more um realism and truth if we yeah. can actually see Scarlett and Florence in a shot together fighting yeah it's it feels good to me because you know it's not it's not stunties right yeah, it was it was great to see some of those action sequences. I I love them. Um, I'm just I'm excited to see the next Kate Shortland action movie now because I really liked uh, the action in Black Widow. Thanks. Yeah, I I want I want to do something. Um, I love um, dealing with violence and power. I think all those things are fun to interrogate because we live such polite lives. Right. So it's, it's most really Most of us, nice. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> most right. of us, hopefully. Right. So right. it's really nice to be able to interrogate that stuff with actors in a safe way, isn't right. it? Yeah, 100%. Um, well, thank you, Kate, for, uh, thank you, for, Kate, first of all, for your time for doing this. And then thank you again one more time for, uh, you know, bringing us on to this, this awesome project that's finally out in theaters and everybody can see. Uh, and hopefully, you know, you and your family can go see it in theaters uh, very soon. Um, Thanks, Good luck with all your upcoming projects. Sounds really exciting. Thank you. And same to you. And I hope to see you again sometime sooner rather than later. We'll be working together. 100%. All right. Thanks, Thanks Kate. Sir. Bye. Bye.